in 1983. This is a great example of how contextualism works well with others. Take a look at that curve in the building. It curves where the river is curving. Look at the two colors of, of glass that we have here. Green that reflects the river below, and blue that will reflect the sky that we normally see above. And the fact that it's reflective glass at all makes us pay attention to everything else in our context. That's kind of what contextualism is all about, bringing everybody to look good in that team photo. And this part of the river is where uh, there's a lot of history. This is the natural junction of three main branches. This is the main branch of the Chicago River. That's the south branch over there. We're going to go down there later. We're going to make our way over to the north branch first for some more history. And speaking of history, this whole space from where the Salesforce Tower will be right now, which will be done in 2023, to where about the Ridley Building was earlier today, that was across the river we're going to Fort Dearborn, this is the whole spread where Chicago grew and expanded that supplied this space with all the architecture from the mid 80s to the early 90s to make references of what the building is about without having to set a foot inside of it. So it's kind of cool because he came up with this concept of these four cute little cottages on the side of the north branch of the Chicago River, which by the way are worth a ton. And the last time one of these was sold, it was sold at 2.2 billion. Here's the cool thing. He brought people to the edge of the North Side of the Now, in 1988, everybody thought he was crazy for that because this side was a dump. That used to be a rail depot. This whole area was unclean, unsafe, full of factories. Nobody wanted to live here. I'll give you guys a better example. The East Bay Club on your right hand side is a high end fitness club that was finished in 1980. Originally, it had no window. Ornamental beauty, beauty. I've talked about buildings that are contextualists and functional in their own beauty. Let's talk about technological beauty as that photo opportunity creeps up on us right now with the trains over the traffic. I'm talking about 150 North Riverside, this Y-shaped building right in front of you guys. 741 feet from the bottom, the ground floor to the top, shaped in the wedge Y-shape that we see here. The building's fascinating because this one's technologically beautiful. Here we go. The whole building from the glass to the base that we see here is only 39 feet wide, which is twice as wide as this boat. Now, a lot of the strong work that we have going on here is coming from the casings. The casings are the structural backbone that is holding up and doing the heavy core work for this building. They are 120 feet deep. 16% of this building is below the ground. Here's the interesting thing. It's wedged into 20% of its available lock space, and that is due to the fact that country's history when it was finished. Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> now, the funny thing about it is that this building was the largest post office in America in the 1920s when it was finished. And, believe it or not, before Amazon existed, people still found a way to have things mailed and ordered to them. It was amazing. That was because Chicago was the mail order catalog capital of America. Thanks to members like Wilson Ward, Marshall Fields, and Sears, all the distribution for packages and logistics. Stuff, how Chicago gets to be the city that you guys see today, which I like to consider as a firebrick out of Miss Catherine O'Leary's barn. What you knew about her was that she was an Irish immigrant council woman whose livelihood came out of the barn. That was four blocks that way. Pretty, pretty close to the river. Now, the fire was exacerbated by the winds that make the rain. Uh, the one we 
Trade Center in New York. Stayed at the Trade Center. This year's Willis Tower is 83 feet taller than the roof. That's because the Warren World Trade Center has a 408 foot spire. It also beats that 1776 height, which, if you ask me, architectural cheese. But <laughs> that's just one magic thing on the boat tour in Chicago. I am not unbiased. Um, so, folks, a very tall building. You guys know how it's measured now for the open most certainly works with the CEO of the Willis Corporation, and they confirmed that they were very proud of changing that building. Um, which is kind of like a little bit of a I mean, don't get me wrong, folks, I'm sure they're a great company, you know, but Chicago is we have a tough time not respecting our architectural heritage. It sounds nice when you're saying the words covered in the sky. Um, so I've heard people call it the Sears Willis, I've heard people call it the Swills, and I've heard people call it the Sears Willis today, which is the first big time in Dubai. Stand at 2,717 feet. Now, why is that relevant here in Chicago? Because the first week will decide that none other than the Chicago Star Index, the office of the Chicago Tower. That's where Chicago lays claim to all those in the world. Boom, nailed that connection for you guys. Check out the signs of Sears Willis, so you guys will find four glass cases suspended in midair. That is known as the best. If you're looking for great panoramic photos of the gorgeous city, during the day, I recommend the Sears Willis. And if you're looking for a good reminder of how to This is a culinary episode of the Midwest. You'll never go hungry in Chicago. You can get yourself a Michelin star meal here. You can get yourself some classy, traditional, like the deep dish pizza. Which, is going to throw some recommendations off the cuff for you guys. I know that if you're probably familiar with Blue Bonatis and Giordano's, which are safe bets, safe chains, yeah, but if you're going to be downtown, you might want to check out La Riola, which is pretty cool. It's on, feel free to talk to me later. I'll be able to give you more recommendations on that. Or if you have access to a car or the L and you're willing to go that far, make your way out to b -Pods. You're going to get you something great crust there as well. And if you're in Chicago, you might as well have yourself a Chicago style hot dog, right? Any place that has a yellow sign that says Vienna Beef is worth your time. Get in there and ask them to drag it through the garden. That's Chicago in for the works. Everything's the same. Everything except. That's right, thank you ladies. You can't put ketchup on a Chicago style hot dog. It's a misdemeanor crime. You're asking for a night in jail. Also, if you like coffee, you're in the right spot too. Or train conductor as well. Looking out the window. I like the third coast as the first one they are close the big games. Perspective. If you ever need to go for a run, there's seven and a half miles of hallways in here, so you can disturb some good office workers at the same time while doing it. It has its own fire station, police station, its own stop on the L. Those are that's a train system again. It used to have its own zip code, 60654. It occupies a cheap, full city blocks. It's massive. There's a wholesale showcase room for furniture, and today it's Amongst other things, where the art is projected, and the art is projected from this beautiful glass case that we have right here, with an eight million dollar sophisticated projection system that is so well calibrated that the art only imprints on the blind. And the last channel up there is at the base of the Greek temple. This is how contextualism again ties together this whole area. And this building with the channels carved into the side represent the channels of the river system here in Chicago as well. If I take that design and put it anywhere else on the river, it would make sense. Because it's site specific. It's functional beauty, bringing together everything around it. And speaking about beauty and design, this is the LaSalle Street Bridge that we're going under. And when it was finished in 1930, it was so massive, so wide, that there were six. Now that's because they had to remove one of the columns to make room for the LaSalle Street Bridge. Today it serves as the headquarters for the Encyclopedia Britannica, which I'm sure all of you young folk are familiar with. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what's going on here. I love this building because of its traditional warehouse style. On your right hand side, you guys see that building with 55 on it? That is an example of brutalism rough exposed concrete deep hunkered in blackened windows that represent a defensive style building with rough materials. Everybody's busy. Everybody's stressed. 
pretty unique here. It's not usually what we do things in Chicago. If you guys have noticed, we have a lot of space between our buildings. You guys will find plenty of examples around here. And I think that makes a difference. I think that's like, I think that psychologically, architecture impacts this as well, as does the beauty, right? The use of space matters. Architecture matters. I mean, you have more space between your buildings. those L bridges on the top right there, those buttresses, they're supporting the main part of the building. That's just a reference to the Tribune Tower as well. Now folks, one of the pride of joys that I have in Chicago is right behind this brown rectangular building. Take a look at Aqua Tower from 2009. That is made by a local Chicago star architect by the name of Jeannie Gain, a fascinating architect who gets her inspiration and in her style of architecture known as geological contextualism. Those balconies that look like cascading water are actually inspired on eroding of limestone. It's a fascinating building. Folks, this building is stunning. It stands at 1,191 feet. That undulating shape that kind of reminds you of Dr. Seuss's Cat in a Hat's hat actually has a technical term if you're interested in it. It's called a fresco, believe it or not. It's what you get when you get a pyramid. You see an example. Triple linear modern is what we see right here. Again, you guys remember the black box modern in the is known as a group as a Spanish revival style. It's modeled after the cathedral of Seville, Spain, known as the Quirelli. Covering 250,000 glazed dirt house tiles that oscillate between six to eight different shades of white, which is why you get that kind of brick pattern on the side of it. It's a gorgeous building. But today we're going to talk about the beauty of the buildings, how they can be ornamentally beautiful, functionally beautiful, wow, and technologically bad. beautiful. This is a case of an ornamentally beautiful classical building. It's kind of strange that it's here, but in the early 1920s, the United States didn't have its own sense of traditional international beauty. So it copied what was going on in Europe and put it here. Take a look at the front of this, folks. We're going to use the Trump Tower as a great example of how a contextualism in architecture works well with everybody else. Look at those patios. One, two, and three. That first patio lines up with the Wrigley building that will pass.